Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Back with the first video in a little while while I've had a short break over the summer. If you want to see what I've been up to on that break, uh, check out my second channel, that's called Tinkering Time, and I'll put a link either on the screen here somewhere or down in the description. But that doesn't mean I've not been doing any retro computer stuff, far from it. I've been getting some things sorted out and projects started in the background, and indeed it's one of those projects that gives us the subject for today's video. You see, there's this certain style of case, and I've been trying to get one of these cases for well over a year now. One finally came up for sale, the only slight snag being it was a case with a complete system inside it. Now the seller didn't want to split it, which is fair enough, it was either buy the whole lot or don't buy any of it. So I decided to buy the whole lot. And then I thought, I'll just take the components out, I'll stick them in the spare parts boxes, and who knows, maybe one day they'll come in useful for something. But, as usual, it's never quite as straightforward as that. So let's head on outside, I'll show you the components, and I'll show you what his problem is. Now the reason we're outside is that these parts came from a PC that was in an environment where somebody was probably vaping or something similar to that. And while they're not too dirty in a kind of physical sense, you know, there's not too much kind of dust and dander on them, they're all completely covered in a sort of sticky layer and they've all got that sort of vaping smell about them. And because, uh, because of that and that stickiness, the smell is really ingrained on these parts. So what we're going to do in this video is for each part, we're going to have, I guess, three objectives. Uh, number one, can the part even be cleaned and the kind of muck and smell gotten, gotten rid of? Number two, what lengths do we have to go to in order to get it clean? And number three, do the parts still work after the cleaning? Now, full disclosure, because, mainly because of the smell, I have not taken this PC inside and powered it up to check that it was working. However, the seller assures me that it was working 100% okay when he sold it. And I appreciate that we're taking them totally off on their word at that, but I, we've got no choice really, that's what we're going to have to do. So we've been taking a look at some of the parts here. We, got, we had a DVD-ROM drive, we had a CD-RW drive in there, which is pretty typical. Two hard drives in there, uh, one much newer and cleaner looking than the other. The graphics card, that was a GeForce MX 4000, so a GeForce 4 MX card. Uh, they were pretty typical, lots of them about AGP card. Had a TV output on it as well, so perhaps... Perhaps with the TV out on the graphics card, uh, you know, the second hard disk, the TV tuner card, the Firewire card. Maybe someone was doing a lot of video editing on this system. Perhaps that's the kind of thing it was used for. Now the motherboard, this is an MSI KT4AV. Typical board for the time, AGP slot, 6 PCI and one of those pointless communication and network risers. Floppy, couple of IDE, front panel connectors. Um, we've got three memory sockets, each with uh, 512 megabytes of RAM in. Uh, processor, heatsink and fan, that looks really disgusting, not going to touch that. We've got a KT400 or a 400A chipset on here, I think. And interestingly, these capacitors around the CPU socket, none of them are bulging or look out of place, which is kind of odd for a motherboard of this vintage. This is right in the middle of the uh, capacitor plague here. Just turning it round so we can have a look on the back, you can see the rest of those capacitors and the power socket. And we've got the usual PS2 keyboard and mouse, a couple of USB, two serial and a parallel, uh, onboard Ethernet, a couple more USB and onboard sound. Now this power supply is quite an interesting one. Uh, there's no maker's name on there and that's a generic model number, it doesn't tell you anything about who made it. But interestingly, it's got this little window on either side so that you can see inside the power supply. However, it's absolutely filthy in there. It's sticky and smelly like all the other parts. But worst of all, it's really lightweight. It feels really low quality. And given that I can't find anything about this, I wouldn't trust it to power my toaster, let alone any retro PC parts. So I'm afraid rather than go to all the effort to clean this, to be honest, the best thing I think we can do with this thing is send it for recycling. 
Okay, let's crack on with some cleaning then. So the first thing we're going to do is unplug the CPU cooling fan. And then after a bit of a struggle, I was able to get the heat sink off the CPU. I'm just guessing it's been on there for a lot of years and it was well baked on. The other thing that was making it a bit tricky is that it's one of those retention clips that that used all three of the little um, the little sticky out bits on the CPU socket, which is good to see because it, at least it meant they were less likely to break those tabs off. And with that out of the way, we can take the three memory modules out. Um, all three are completely different, but I think all three are 512 megabytes in capacity each. and then lift up the little lever and out comes our CPU. So let's start with cleaning the CPU. Now being sandwiched between the CPU socket and the underside of the heatsink, it's been pretty well protected, um, you know, from the worst of the, the muck and the smell and whatnot. Now I'm going to be using these wonder wipes first up. I found these really good for cleaning PC parts. Um, they're meant as, uh, or they're sort of advertised as DIY sort of uh, wipes for cleaning up anything, but especially sticky things like silicon and whatnot. So I've been trying them out and yeah, these have been really good. And as you can see, they're easily getting the, the worst of this sort of thick old thermal paste off. And then to finish up, I'm just using some IPA and an anti-static or allegedly anti-static scrubbing brush just to give the top surface of the CPU a good clean and to get into all the nooks and crannies. Uh, one thing you've got to be careful about when doing this is uh, on these old Athlons is not to knock those foam pads off, which is exactly what I did here. But uh, not to worry, as long as you keep hold of the pad, these can easily be glued back on uh, at a later date. But yeah, quick clean with the IPA and CPU came up really nicely. I was happy with this. Next up, the three memory modules. Um, not really a lot to wipe off with these, so we're going straight to the IPA and the and the uh, anti-static brush, and I'm just going to clean along uh, each memory module using the brush to get uh, in between all the chips and try and get as much uh, mess out of there and as much muck as possible. Some of these labels on the RAM, some still look in pretty good condition, but others are kind of half ripped off or worn or whatever. So I think after the cleaning, I'll wait till everything's dried and then sort of take a view on them. And if they're not in good condition, I'll remove the rest of the label and make sure all the kind of sticky goo underneath that holds the label on there is, uh, is cleaned up. In a similar way to the CPU, with the three modules being kind of jammed in there next to each other, the insides of the modules weren't too bad. It was just the sort of two outer faces, if you like, that had uh, had a bit of muck and a uh, bit of muck and debris collect on them. But yeah, fairly easy to clean, not too big a job, and they've come up quite nice. Now, looking at the two hard drives. Um, First up is the, uh, what I'm presuming is the newer one of the two. It's certainly the cleaner one of the two. Not a whole lot to, to do here. We've got lots of nice big flat surfaces that kind of lend themselves to cleaning. So just as before, we're going to start with the wonder wipes and give those uh, a good sort of scrub, a good wipe down, make sure we get into all the nooks and crannies with them. In order to get the rubbish out of the electrical connections, I'm going to use some electrical contact cleaner and then we'll just spray that in there, let the excess run out and make sure it fully dries. And then as for the circuit board on the back, it's back to spending some time with the IPA and the scrubbing brush and it's just a case of working it in there, getting into all those nooks and crannies and getting the muck out of them. I'll finish this hard drive and then it'll be the exact same process for the other one. Uh, just took a little bit more time, a bit more patience on the second drive since it was uh, dirtier to begin with. Now moving on to the two optical drives, these are a little bit trickier. 
Um, the actual external parts of the units are not too bad. Again, lots of big flat surfaces that we can attack with the Wonder Wipe. A uh, bit of permanent marker on this one that I'm just using a bit of IPA to help uh, remove. So the external fascia, that was fairly easy to clean. It was just a case of using the wipes and all the external bits. The connectors at the back, they had some electrical contact cleaner in them, uh, like before. Then it was a case of using a bit of wire or a straightened paper clip to poke through the little hole to pop the drawer out so we could clean all that part of it. Now the DVD which we're seeing here, this was pretty clean, it was perhaps a later addition to the system or maybe just wasn't used very much. But the CDRW, which I didn't record, this was much dirtier, the whole draw mechanism was very dirty. I popped the front bezel off so that I could clean that and clean behind it. But then actually inside the drive itself, peering into the mechanisms of the drive inside, that was really mucky with uh, the kind of smell and fluff and lint and God knows what else. Now taking one of these things to bits, it would be a serious undertaking for something that's not really a particularly valuable part. Um, so what I decided to do instead was I blasted the inside of the drive with some compressed air, tried to get as much of, of that kind of detritus out as I could set it to one side, we'll leave it to dry, and then when it's dry, we'll just have to have a look at it, have a smell of it, see whether that's been enough to get it clean. Okay, the TV tuner card and the Firewire card. Not too much to say about these. They weren't too dirty and they didn't smell as much either, so maybe these were a later addition to the system, uh, just like we suspect the DVD drive was. Quick clean with a bit of IPA and the brush and they were good to go. Moving on to the graphics card, I could see that there was muck in between their fins on the heatsink but also underneath the heatsink where it overhangs the sort of GPU chip itself. So the first thing to do was to remove that heatsink and then put that to one side, uh, we'll get back to cleaning that later. And then after that, much like we've done with some of the other small PCBs, just using the wipe first up to give the card a wipe down, get the rest of the thermal paste off that uh, GPU, and then a good clean down with the brush and the IPA. Now moving on to the motherboard, this is going to be a little bit trickier for a couple of reasons. First up is just the size of it, the fact that it's so much bigger than a lot of the other bits we've cleaned so far. And secondly, it's probably one of the dirtier bits since it gets a lot of the airflow directed at it. First up, tried a bit of compressed air, but because of the sticky nature, that wasn't really shifting any of the sort of bigger pieces of dirt that were on there. So then after that, the kind of next option would be to try our IPA in the scrubbing brush again. Now, th the problem I was finding with this is not only, as I've said, is it a big area, so it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of patience to do something like this, but also because there was a lot more muck on the motherboard than other parts of the system, the IPA, whilst it was kind of loosening a lot of that, it wasn't really kind of shifting the muck away, it wasn't kind of removing it, it was just sort of drying out and settling back on the motherboard. So at that point I decided we needed a different approach. So I found a nice big plastic tub, just about big enough to fit the motherboard into, and then I'm filling this up, don't need loads in here, just got about an inch, inch and a half in the bottom, and this is just 99.9% .9 pure IPA going in. So then I was able to tilt the box and sort of submerge one side of the motherboard at a time, uh, you know, completely in the IPA. And then that meant when I was attacking it again with this anti-static brush, there was enough IPA there to kind of float that dirt away. It wasn't wanting to kind of resettle back down in the nooks and crannies on the motherboard. So yeah, not the way I'd normally clean something like this, but in the end, uh, I, think the, uh, I think the motherboard came up quite nice. So here's a shot of the IPA when I'd finished. You can probably see a bit of a brownish tinge to it and uh, you can also make out some of the bigger particles of dirt and whatever the heck else that is on there that we've managed to clean off. 
Okay, moving on to the CPU heatsink and fan. Again, one of the dirtiest areas of the system since it pulls most of the air through it. First thing we need to do is unscrew this fan off the top. And then again, just trying the compressed air on this. It makes very little difference uh, due to the kind of sticky nature of the dirt. So for now, we'll just put the heatsink to one side and uh, we'll try cleaning the fan first. And then it's just a case of getting into every last little nook and cranny inside the fan, you know, fronts of the blades, backs of the blades, the sort of hub in the middle, etc. Using a screwdriver or something else uh, as needed to poke the wipe in. The only bit that's particularly tricky to get to is sort of inside the motor, you know, in the in the hub in the centre of the fan, but just blasted that with plenty of contact, of contact cleaner. Try and flush the worst of the muck out. And with the fan nearly finished, I was thinking about the best way to clean the, the, uh, the two heat sinks, and I was thinking this was going to be really tricky and going to have to be uh, poking, you know, something down in between all the fins or maybe submerging them and looking for a brush with some really long bristles or something like that. But then of course, it dawned on me, these, the heat sinks, these aren't electrical, these are just lumps of metal. So we can be a lot sort of more aggressive, for want of a better word, when it comes to cleaning them. So that's when I had the idea to use this. It's my pressure washer, and there's a clickbait title for a video that I've missed out on. Anyway, not to worry. All I did, put the heatsink uh, in a clamp so that I can hold it down with my foot and not get my foot soaking wet, and then it's literally just cold water uh, under high pressure, no chemicals on it or anything like that. And the pressure washer did a fantastic job of getting uh, getting these heatsinks clean. Got right down in there, you know, the aluminium, so there's no worries about them rusting or anything like that. They were spotless when they were done, you know, really impressed with this. The other thing that surprised me slightly was that the uh, dried up thermal paste on the base of the heatsink, the pressure washer did not manage to shift that, so I'll have to have a look at softening that up separately and uh, sort of removing that another way. But um, yeah, really happy with this. Uh, worked really well, if, uh, if a little unconventional. Okay, after all that cleaning, we've got the system reassembled and we are ready to test. And I'm pleased to say we've got almost all the parts here that we cleaned. The only one that didn't make it was that uh, CDRW. You can see the uh, DVD drive in the corner, but there was just too much mess and too much smell on the sort of mechanisms inside that drive. So as far as I'm concerned, it's just not worth the time and effort to try and clean something like that, you know, to the, to the degree that it needed cleaning. I guess if I wanted to be really critical, if you get right up close to the motherboard, you can just get the sort of tiniest bit of smell off it around this sort of area here. So maybe I missed a bit, maybe it needs another bath in the IPA, but sat back here where I am, you can't smell anything on it, so I'm not too concerned about that. But the question is, after all that cleaning, do these components still work? Quick note before we do, when I got this system, only one of the two hard drives was plugged in. Can't remember which one it was, so we'll try one. If I don't have any luck, we'll try the other one. Right, fingers crossed. Here goes. We're getting noises. We've got display. Okay, CMOS settings um, wrong, that's fine. Obviously we took the battery off for, for cleaning, so let's get into the BIOS and, uh, and have a look. It's gonna put the frequency and multiplier in. I'm surprised it doesn't automatically detect um, front side bus clock. Right, that's the BIOS uh, sorted out with the info it needs. Just a quick look on PCL status. That all looks good. Um, it also seems to be confirming that everything's working. So let's save and exit setup. We'll see if uh, we'll see if anything boots off that hard disk. Wasn't expecting to see that. Is that um, 
presume that's one of Windows's recovery things. What version of Windows is it? Okay, we appear to be stuck in a bit of a weird boot loop here. Every time it boots up, we get this Windows is loading files, which I presume is some sort of recovery, um, you know, recovery console uh, partition thing for Windows. Um, every time that gets to the end, it reboots and then just keeps going round and round in circles doing that. So I think what we'll do, we'll shut this down, we'll plug the other hard drive in and see if uh, anything changes. And there we have it, good old Windows XP. And to be fair, it's about the right operating system for you know, hardware of this vintage. The system has recovered from a serious error. Well, you can say that again. Yeah, good old XP, load of stuff down here in the sort of quick launch, or oh, not the quick launch, the toolbar area that we don't need. Uh, very little on here, looks like a fairly uh, fairly clean install, but I think we can say that everything appears to be working. Quick look in device manager, you see we've got this multimedia controller, multimedia video controller showing up as, uh, you know, not properly installed yet. I'm pretty sure that'll be that TV card. Um, I mean, the fact it's showing up is at least a good sign, but I can't see anything on here that would suggest that um, the software for that's installed. So perhaps whoever did have this system just didn't have it installed properly or didn't bother with it. We have got the uh, Firewire controller card showing up though. I can't really test it. I haven't got any Firewire devices to plug in, but it's there, it's all reporting good in Device Manager, as is everything else. Right, I'm not gonna dig into this installation of Windows XP. Uh, I'm just gonna blank these hard drives and they'll get put in spare parts boxes along with uh, all the rest of these components. So I guess it just goes to show however dirty or smelly, you know, second-hand hardware can be. You give it a really good clean to whatever reasonable level you have to. You put the uh, patience and the sort of effort in to do so. There's a really good chance that the hardware is going to be absolutely fine afterwards and uh, nice and clean to boot. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up or a comment down below. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.